Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and this is the LG G3 OLED, LG's latest and brightest OLED TV. And having used it for the last month, I think this could be the best TV to buy in 2023. It's got the usual features including 4K, 120Hz, Dolby Vision and VRR. But it's also got a few upgrades which makes this TV stand out against the rest. Features that completely transforms how it looks. But is it still worth buying? Well, now that I've put hundreds of hours into it for both movies and gaming on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, I think now is the perfect time to give you my honest thoughts. Okay, so let me jump straight in with the picture quality. And it's probably no surprise that like with any of LG's OLED TVs, the image quality is incredible. Throwing 4K movies or demo content on here shows how awesome this TV can be. Everything is crystal clear, sharp and vibrant, and I'm blown away by how well it performs. And watching any movies or TV shows that support HDR or Dolby Vision will really show off what this TV is capable of. Whether it's live action or animated, the colours really pop. And what's great is, provided you turn off some of the default options in the settings, the image never looks over-processed or over-sharpened. It's as natural looking as you'd expect. So HDR looks great, but it's how it handles the SDR content that has really surprised me. It's rare that I watch SDR now, as most movies and TV shows are available in HDR. But on the off chance that I do watch some live TV or an old movie, it's always worth checking these things out. Now with thanks to LG's A9 Gen 6 processor, which is designed for the OLED TVs, it upscales and sharpens the picture to create an improved image. Essentially it means older content will look even better on here. And as we've got a glossy screen, the colours look deep rather than flat. And the self-lighting pixels that we get from an OLED means the contrast and black levels are perfect. You just cannot beat this level of contrast on a non-OLED TV. But even with those great black levels and infinite contrast, we're not getting black crush at all. Which is where the black areas of the screen lose too much detail. Kind of the opposite to being blown out. Here you can see how good the black or the dark areas are of this scene. Which not only helps with the contrast, but makes the colours and highlights pop even more. Now usually one of the biggest issues of watching an OLED in a bright room or during the day is the reflection handling, especially in those dark areas. And that's due to two things, the reflections of the mirror-like screen and the brightness levels. Well with the new OLED EVO panel, both of these have been improved, so much so that this has completely transformed how it looks, and has genuinely made me excited about watching it day and night. The reflection handling on this TV is the best that I've ever seen. I mean coming from an LG C1 that I had before, it was like a giant mirror. But LG's OLED EVO panel has some crazy anti-reflective coating that I don't think I've ever seen on their TVs before. It's not matte though, it's still 100% glossy. But it's got a super dark tint to it that helps with reducing those reflections. I tested a few dark scenes out just to see how it would handle them during the day. And honestly, I cannot express how impressed I am. Sure, you're going to see windows and light if you point it directly at a window, as it's still a huge black mirror. But this makes daytime viewing so much better, and it is certainly closing the gap between OLED and LED TVs for those bright rooms. But there's something else that's different about the LG OLED EVO panel this year, and that's the new Brightness Booster Max. This is one of the biggest changes that we've seen. So by default, OLEDs don't get super bright. I mean, when you compare it to an LCD or an LED TV. However, thanks to the new MLA tech, or the Micro Lens Array, the G3 is now 70% brighter than non-OLED EVO models. And that is huge. This is seriously brighter than any previous LG OLED that I've ever had, and it shows. Now, you might wonder, what are the benefits of having a brighter screen? Well, for me, it's being able to use it during the day in a well-lit room without having to close the blinds. It's being able to game day or night and not worry too much about reflections. It also means you have more control over how bright you need it. Oh, and by default, the energy saving mode is switched to auto. It's something that I always switch off to give me more control over the brightness levels. Let's talk movies. I probably watch three or four per week to the point where I've got nothing new to watch. And from all of the different TVs that I've owned and reviewed, this is without doubt one of the best TVs that I've used. We've got all of the apps installed, including Netflix, Apple TV, Prime and Disney, which are all just one click away on the remote control. But the fact that we get Dolby Vision support, those insane black levels and the reflection handling that I've already mentioned, it makes watching this day or night an absolute dream. Now it's always easy to be wowed the first time you switch on a new TV. But it's when you're still impressed days, weeks or months later that you realise it was the right choice. And the fact that LG is celebrating 10 years of being the number one selling OLED TV says it all. I imagine the G3 will snap up those awards again in 2023. But LG doesn't just make great TVs for movies, they make incredible TVs for gaming. We're talking 4 HDMI 2.1 ports with full 4K and 120Hz support. 
That means playing games on the PS5 and Xbox Series X looks awesome. And considering more and more of us are playing on our TVs, you might want to know why this is probably the best TV for gaming right now. Firing up the PS5 and playing on a 60 or 120 FPS game runs incredibly smooth with thanks to the VRR support. And VRR, or the Variable Refresh Rate, is what allows the screen to remain stutter-free and reduces the chance of screen tearing. And playing games like Spider-Man Remastered is buttery smooth. And it not only supports 4K but also 1440p. So if you did fancy running your games at 1440p and 120Hz, well you can. In fact, this TV ticks all of the boxes that you need for both the PS5 and Xbox Series consoles. And the brightness boost that I mentioned before, well that is carried over to games as well. So if you've ever played on an OLED and thought, this isn't bright enough, well don't worry, the G3 does have you covered. And it's not just how good it looks, it's how responsive it is. The G3 states it has a 0.1 millisecond response time, supports NVIDIA G-Sync and AMD FreeSync Premium. So whether you're playing story-driven games, racing through the hills, or trying to hold down the objective in Call of Duty, the OLED EVO technically does it all. It's rapid too. We're talking around 5.5 milliseconds input lag, which is, I think, the fastest LG OLED TV right now. At least it's quicker than last year's G2. And if you are using a TV for games like Call of Duty, you're going to want the fastest response time possible, and pulling the trigger gives practically no delay. LG have also created something called their Game Optimizer Mode that we've seen over the last few years, and it is one of the best TV features for gamers. Simply by pressing the settings button on the remote control will bring up this overlay. On here you can see the current frame rate, whether VRR is running, and a few other settings. This is useful if you want to check the game you're playing is running at the correct frame rate. On top of that, you can edit and customise which options actually show up. So I've removed one and added in the resolution option instead. Now I know most of us will watch our TV straight on, but the fact is not everyone can. Seating positions and room layouts might mean the TV is not going to be straight on and it could be off centre. But as you can see, the G3 has incredible view and angles. You can practically see it from anywhere in the room. And as I'm often asked how far I sit from a 77 inch TV, well here it is. I'm sat 10 feet from the screen to where my head is. I could sit a little further back, but I think this is the perfect distance for a 77 inch TV. And that's to get that full immersive experience. So most TVs look the same these days, they typically have thin bezels and borders, and generally look pretty clean. Well the G3 has the same ultra thin bezels, which gives it that floating look, but it's also got a nice brushed metal frame. So around the edges, instead of it being black or plastic, it looks a little more stylish. Now there's no chin across the bottom, but there is a very small notch. And this houses the sensor and the physical power button underneath, but other than that it's a very slim and clean profile. Now this TV is designed to be flush to the wall, as it's provided with a wall bracket to allow almost a zero gap, but it also means it does not come with a tabletop stand. I did explain during my unboxing video that as I swap TVs out quite regularly for reviews, I unfortunately couldn't use the included bracket, so I use this one instead, which allows me to fit any TV that I need. It does mean that it's not flush to the wall, but as I had a power socket fitted behind it last week, it would always be a few centimetres from the wall anyway. But while we're back here, these are the available ports that we get on the G3. We get four HDMI 2.1 ports, one of which is used for eARC, and they all support 4K and 120Hz. Then there are three USBs, an Ethernet, optical out, and the cable ports. And you'll notice that they are all located on the side of the screen, which makes it easier for installing new cables once it's on the wall. And if you do use the provided bracket that it comes with, this is how it would look. So it would be crazy close to the wall, but it also allows you to tilt the TV out and swap cables out when needed. Just bear in mind that as the power cable cannot be removed, you will either need to feed the cable through your wall, or find another option to hide it under your TV. And what I like about this design is it means if you enable the always ready mode, it turns the TV into a digital picture frame. It puts the TV into a lower power state, and will either show the clock, artwork, moving artwork, or your own pictures if you'd prefer. Now it's not something that I would use as I'd rather have the TV switched off, but it's a nice feature that you can turn on or off. So the OS, menus, and interface have had some nice improvements for 2023. So WebOS 23 takes what we saw last year and adds a few new features and functions that I think have improved it overall. Now when you press the settings button on the remote control, we get this quick card instead of jumping straight into the full settings page. We've got things like the picture mode, brightness, and contrast, along with a few others. But not only that, you can edit this screen to display the buttons that you would rather see. So you can add or remove any of these from the list. Of course, we still have the full settings menu too, so in here we can tweak and control exactly how the TV performs, from brightness to colours, clarity and all of the image processing features you may or may not like. 
Another new feature that we've seen added is the AI Picture Wizard. What this does is it gives you a selection of pictures to choose from, essentially asking which one you prefer based on the colours and the style. It then gathers that information and creates a bespoke picture mode just for you. It's a pretty cool feature for anyone not sure which mode to go for, although I always come back to the ISF as well as the Filmmaker mode. Pressing the Home button brings us to this screen, a place where all of your apps and trending TV shows are displayed. And it's great to see that LG have optimised it this year as there's no lag at all when you're scrolling or navigating around. Across the bottom we have this same app launcher for things like Netflix, Disney and Apple TV, and the order of these can all be edited as well. Then there's the home screen where all of the available inputs, smart bulbs and gadgets will show up. And as this TV does support Matter, the new smart home standard, it means it will communicate more easily with future smart home devices as they launch. Now it's far too early to talk about burning or image retention on a brand new TV, but there are some OLED panel care settings that are worth talking about. Under general settings you'll have access to the pixel clean-in to check and adjust each pixel, screen move which very slightly moves the screen regularly, and logo brightness. This dims the logo on channels that you regularly watch, things like the news and kids channels. Once again we get the picture in picture mode which works quite well and allows you to either display two screens side by side or one inside the other. You could have an HDMI input on one side, like I have Sky Stream on the left, and YouTube or another app on the other side. Unfortunately though, it's pretty limited, and you can only have one HDMI on at a time, and only certain apps seem to work. YouTube is fine, but I couldn't get any of the streaming services like Netflix or Disney to work. It also supports AirPlay, so if you're using an iPhone, iPad or Mac, you can share your screen or photo library from your device straight to the TV. And as for the remote control, we've still got the magic wand. Now this is a feature that I actually use and like, so I'm pleased that we've got another year with it. It makes navigating around, especially when you're using the browser, so much easier. Essentially you get a cursor on screen that you can wave around with a remote control. So during the setup process you will be prompted with AI sound, where you can toggle it on and off and demonstrate the difference. Now personally I never use the internal speakers, as I have some small speakers around the room that I use instead. However considering how slim this TV is, and how close it is to the wall, the speakers sound okay. I mean, I'm going to recommend you buying a soundbar with this, but for general TV viewing, it's not bad. Also, as Bluetooth is supported, you're able to pair your Bluetooth headphones to the TV and listen to your movies that way. But have a listen to this and see what you think. Luring you with the promise of a vibrant new world, when in reality, it's doomed to be cracked open by nemesis and scoured of life. Now normally I'd get to this part of the review and list a handful of issues or improvements, things that might put you off buying one or the compromises that are worth considering. Well the only one that I have is the permanently attached power cable. I really wish LG would adopt a removable cord that would allow people to feed the cable through their walls. And considering this TV is designed to be wall mounted, most will want to hide these cables. But that is it, that's the only negative I've got about this TV. So in my case, because I've got a socket behind the wall, I don't need to worry about the power cable. So the G3 is available in four sizes, including a 55, a 65, a 77 and 83 inches. But one thing I wanted to point out is the 83 inch doesn't come with the MLA tech, so you're not getting that 70% brightness boost that you get with the other sizes. So these are not cheap by any means, however you are getting the best and brightest LG OLED in 2023. On top of that, the G3 comes with a 5 year warranty, which gives us all peace of mind should anything go wrong. So although I think this is the best TV to buy right now for both movies and gaming, and I would have no trouble recommending this to anyone, what do you think to it? Is the brighter screen enough to sway you to the G series, or is there something else that you would rather buy instead? I have dropped a link below if you'd like to check it out along with the prices. And if you wanted to know more about LG's 10 years of basically being the best OLED TVs to buy, just search on Google for LG OLED to read more. Now drop a best OLED TV in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my G3 unboxing video next, as that covers the full unboxing, install and dimensions of this TV. Well thanks for watching, please like, sub and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.